Uh, hi everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight for Victorian courting and zombies. Uh, my name is Christy Cates. I'm creative director of the musical theater program here at the New York Film Academy. Um, uh, we're very happy to have you all here with us tonight. Uh, we're giving it a little extra time because the MTA on Saturday. Um, uh, but here we go. So. This is our, you are here for our 25th new workshop. Yes. Our program has produced 25 readings of new works that have never had a commercial run uh, anywhere, and some of them have never been done ever, as our earlier show today. And I will let Brian, the writer, Brian Glasky, ladies yes. and gentlemen. what version you are seeing, but here we are in New York City, the hub of musical theater, and the main objective of our department, other than giving a tremendous education, is to connect our students with as much of the industry as we can in the time that they are here with us. So the New Work Series is a fabulous opportunity for our students not only to work on this new material, but also to meet writers and composers and directors. Um, the director of this piece, Travis is not here this evening, unfortunately, but uh, he was just the associate director on the Share Show on Broadway. So, um, and our, of course, amazing music supervisor, who Brian will introduce later. Um, <laughs> but to connect our students with this material and with these people and to gain this experience. So it really means a lot that you're all here with us tonight. Uh, quick housekeeping, if you need to exit, the show's only one hour long. If you need to leave, please go up the center aisle and out the door right there to your left. And no photography or filming. A uh, quick shout out to Chris Kennedy, who's in the booth on Light and Sound. And to uh, our program coordinator, Jordan Dragatsky, who's in the booth. Uh, uh, my name is Brian. I'm the music uh, composer and lyricist of this. My book writer, Susan, is out in Los Angeles, so I was kind of flying solo. She skyped in a little bit um, and, and helped, but this was, oh, I was so scared to do this all by myself. Um, so what you're seeing, you're the first New York East Coast audience to see this project. Uh, we haven't even really visited it in a couple years, uh, so this is pretty much a brand new show. I'm very nervous, very excited. Um, feel free to laugh. <laughs> Everything open. <laughs> show. So uh, I'll just let the. But yeah, please do turn off your phones and everything because this is going to be 1800s London and those things did not exist. I don't even think I phone. Did they have a telephone yet? No. 1876, I think, is when the phone was invented. And I know that because of the Reba McIntyre.
ballroom with all the splendor and riches of 1800s London, yet with the creep factor of my grandmother's attic. Head servant, Louisa! You're speaking your thoughts out loud again. Apol <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, Miss Dingleberry. I lost my inner monologue in the war. <laughs> Oh my, Miss Flop Swallow approaches. Miss Dingleberry rolls her eyes at me as I walk to watch creepily from the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Dingleberry, what a delight to see you again. Oh, Miss Flop Swallow, it is always a pleasure. I trust you are well. How could I not be? I am a beautiful woman of the highest breeding in the 19th century. As long <laughs> as a man tells me what to do, and I listen. <laughs> My life is grand. Agreed. All the pleasures of the 18th century, but pretty addresses. And shorter corsets, less deforming of her body. Pray tell, you have heard the rumor of these silly poor people. <gasps> the rumor about the zombies. <laughs> the rumor about the zombies. <laughs> What's a poppycock? Thank goodness we're too rich to listen to such nonsense. Good evening, everyone. Oh, hush, a man is speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. Thank you all for making the long, arduous trek in your horses and buggies to our glorious London ballroom. And now, may I present the man with the biggest balls in the land, Mr. <laughs> Blubberbutt. <laughs> Now we're at 
First one to the yard gets to play with my balls! <laughs> Mr. Blubberbutt exits laughing jovially with the guests. Is she going to be doing that all night? <laughs> Hush, Mary, ignore her. She's but a servant. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
it. It runs on liquid from old bones. We'll sell the invention and use the money to start a school. A horse's carriage? How would it go? I just told you. Uh, there's no time for this nonsense. It's bad enough that this is forever my face. But have it tonight. <laughs> Oh, 
God. Ladies, I introduce you to Mr. Bingsley. He is decomposing. His eyes are closing. If he attempts proposing, then I think you should decline. His blood's not clotting. His teeth are rotting. So am I. His reanimated corpse is like the blood of Frankenstein. He's moaning and he's groaning and he's holding his own eyes. We're in for an unbelievable surprise. Yes, he had a bit of a cough last week, but this is the 1800s. A cough is not a death sentence, right, Beasley? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry again, good one, old chap. He's quite destructive. Maybe so. He's reconstructive. Apropos. I hardly think that koala lies with something so seductive. And he's unconscious. So is the queen. There's no cognition. What's that mean? We don't need a wedding planner, we need a mortician. He's stumbling and he's mumbling and he's bringing in the flies. We're in for an unbelievable surprise. Sisters, I'm so in love. Oh, come on, go get him, look it up. If only you could see the future as I do, sisters. A future where we don't have to settle for this man simply for survival. Where women can participate in government and don't need permission to use the outhouse.
be what? Cock maybe. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
Oh, that smell would be your horrid personality. Ha, 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 ha. No, silly, it's because we live in a barn, remember? Damn it, Elizabeth! <laughs> I must have waited to tell that to Mr. Bingsley. I need to get a closer look at his huge endowment. <laughs> I don't like her. What's <laughs> wrong the best? Look at these sketches set from other town supporting incidents. Mary reaches under her dress and pulls out what's this? A piece of parchment with the drawing of a hideously deformed creature. Look, this is exactly what Bingsley looks like. Mary, put away your panty sketch. Good <laughs> <laughs> sisters, let's go back to find Bingsley before Ardelia gets her claws too deep into him. Quickly, without haste. It's with haste. What? What do you mean? The expression you said without haste. Yes, we must away without haste. We must away with haste. Now, why would we away with all this haste slowing us down? <laughs> no, it's the scripture in, that modifies the way. Oh, shut up, Mary! Just go. <laughs> Oh, Miss Flopswalla, I'd like it very much if I could share a dance with you. Don't listen to him, Miss Flopswalla. <laughs> no, skinny. I would like the next dance. <laughs> 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 Got it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Not a word. If you want to marry that very scary Mary, down a glass of sherry and propose. But I propose, if you suppose, that she's the one you chose, you should interpose yourself between the two of them. <laughs> Those. <laughs> That at all. I will give you my blessing to marry Mary, but in return I need you to keep Ardelia and Bingsley apart. He falls for Elizabeth and she falls for me. Do you understand now? Hmm. I think so, but sing it again. If you want to marry that very Mary Mary and you don't mind that she's hairy, I'll assist. But I insist and you persist in getting Ardelia super pissed. Then she'll be dismissed, leaving Elizabeth top of the list. Get the gist? <laughs> I comprehend you clearly. I understand you merely. You are asking merely for a quid pro quo. Your back has started itching, and accordingly, you pitching that our backs could use some switching. So I'll give that scratch a go. I will be distracting her, and you will be attracting her, and all this counteracting and the subsequent subtracting will enact a satisfactory conclusion for us both. You will win the one I will, and I will win the one you will, and soon we do, and those two two will do a you will switch a room. So long as she and him are through, and Mary knows my heart is true, I couldn't bear to bear my Mary thinking I was all contrary. Since we circle squares in and prepare, you swear and oh, if you want to let <laughs> Please, if you don't forgive me, I'll kill myself. I don't understand. Forgive you for what? 
you see? I'm too scared to say the actual words. I, I love. You love? What? Who? Mary. You love a Mary? There's another girl named Mary at the party? <laughs> You're crying out loud, Alfred. Stop rubbing your romances in front of Mary, who will never be so fortunate. But I love her. Well, well, well. The Funk Bottom sisters are at the butt of a joke yet again. Good evening, Ardelia. How are you enjoying tonight's festivities? Well, when I arrived, it was so tragically dull. But I believe I have found quite a handsome suitor. You have? She hasn't. You haven't? I have. You have? You have. She hasn't. Who hasn't? I have. Who hasn't? She hasn't? She hasn't. Beasley and I are in love. Yes! He hasn't come to me, but I can tell he really wanted my hand. I must go share the good news. <coughs> Please, do enjoy the shriveled, sad, sad, underbelly of the ball. Please, come. Mary, I must tell you something. I've never seen a woman with so much brains and... Brains? Plural! Mm. Are you making fun of me because I have two heads? No! <laughs> you don't understand. Now you're saying I don't understand? So now I don't have enough brains? Please forgive this you witness, for your eyes have been misled. Look at you then suddenly my heart beats red. Uh, Mary, I'm no slave to indiscretion nor indecorous display. Permit me, please, to see how well she use that head on my love. I love Alfred. You promised you'd have me still being bleak from the funk bottom sisters. What? No. Wait! Mary! <laughs> <laughs> Underhanded deceptions. I don't understand. Why does he not love me? I love him. Love him. Love makes everything possible. Have you just believed? <laughs> you just met him 30 minutes ago. It's for the best. He's a zombie. Mary, Alfred is not a zombie. You are fortifying yourself. No, Mr. Beasley. Yes, Elizabeth is going to marry Mr. Beasley. Keep up. <laughs> Love. And Mr. Blubberbutt's fall. What a 
your eyes going. Wait till we are away. 
ago, and we ought to be wed. I'm so happy! Ben! Wow,